Smile and learn. Hello, friends. It's the soccer finals. The day we've all been waiting for. What was that? You don't know how to play soccer. Don't worry. I'm going to explain all the rules. Parts of the soccer field. Soccer is played on a rectangular field divided into two areas. This circle right here is called the central circle. It is used for kickoffs, a method of starting each half of play, or to restart the game after scoring a goal. Each one of the two halves of the field has a goal area and a goal post. Rules of the game To play soccer, you need a ball like this one. We kick and pass the ball with our feet. We can also use other parts of our body, except our arms and hands. For example, you can use your chest to cushion the ball down, or your head to score a goal. If any of the players except the goalkeeper touched the ball voluntarily with their hands, the game would stop and the foul would be whistled in favor of the attacking team. The object of a soccer game is to get the ball into the opposing team's goal. When this happens, people shout, GOAL! A goal is scored when the ball passes the goal line between the goal posts. The game consists of two 45-minute long periods with a halftime of 15 minutes. The team that scores more goals by the end of the game wins. When a soccer game ends in a draw, depending on the competition, the game will continue for two additional 15-minute halves. This is called an overtime period. Fair play is important in all sports, and in soccer as well. A foul will be whistled if any soccer rules are broken during the game or there is use of excessive force. We're going to explain other types of fouls in our next videos. Soccer Positions Soccer is played by two teams of 11 players. The goalkeeper, the defenders, the midfielders, and the forwards. The goalkeeper stands in front of the goal to prevent the opposing team from scoring goals. The goalkeeper is the only player allowed to touch the ball with his or her hands, but they should do so in the penalty area. Defenders are the last line of defense before the goalkeeper. Their primary role is to stop any attacks and prevent the opposing team from scoring goals. Midfielders are positioned in the middle of the field. They have many roles like passing the ball to the forwards to score goals, or help the defenders regain possession of the ball. Forwards are the players who attack and play nearest to the opposing team's goal. That's why their role is to score goals. I still have so much more to tell you about playing soccer, but now I need to warm up before the game. Don't miss the next video. We're going to find out a lot more about this very popular sport. See you soon! Hello again, friends. Welcome to the second video about how to play soccer. We have just finished our warm-up. We're about to start the game. What was that? You're not sure how a soccer game starts? I'll explain it to you right away. Before the game starts, referees ask team captains to toss a coin, choosing either heads or tails. The team that wins the toss decides which goal, that is, which side of the field they will attack during the first half of the game. The other team will take the kickoff. For the second half, the winning team takes the kickoff, and both teams will change fields. The ball is placed in the center of the field for kickoff after the referee has whistled to start the game. The kickoff starts in the center of the field every time a goal is scored or when the second half of the game begins. By the way, do you know when the ball goes out of play and when it doesn't? A ball goes out of play when it has crossed the goal line or the sideline or when the referee makes the decision to stop the game for different reasons, like when a foul occurs, for example. In any other case, the ball is in play at all times, including when it hits the goalposts or touches the referee. 
Types of Kicks In soccer, there are different types of kicks to restart the game when the ball has gone out of bounds or every time the referee decides to do so. I'm going to explain some of these kicks using as an example the red team and the blue team. The Throw-In If a blue team player has thrown the ball out of the field over the touchline, the red team will do a throw-in, exactly where the ball left the field. The touchlines, also called the sidelines, are the longer lines on the field and indicate the play area. Players should do a throw-in, placing both their hands on either side of the ball, taking the ball behind the head. Corner Kick If the red team kicks the ball over the goal line in the air or on the ground, then the blue team gets a corner kick. We use our foot to take a corner kick. Goal Kick If a blue team player passes the ball over the goal line of the opposing team, the red team will take a goal kick. The goal kick is normally taken by the goalkeeper, but any other player is allowed to take the kick as well. Kickoff We've talked about this type of kick before. A kickoff starts both halves of the game and is taken in the center of the field. After scoring a goal, the losing team does the kickoff in the same spot. For example, if the red team scores a goal, the blue team will do the kickoff in the center of the field to restart the game. As you can see, soccer is a very exciting game, and the most important part is to learn how to play as a team. The game is about to start! Don't miss the next video to learn more about soccer! See you soon! Hello again! We're winning! The score is 1-0! to zero. The referee has just whistled the end of the first half! Now we're starting the 15-minute halftime break to rest and recover. What was that? You don't know what are the main duties of referees in soccer? No problem. I'll tell you all about them. Referees wear black or yellow and use a whistle to start and stop the game. Referees keep time, whistle the beginning and the end of the game, and also the extra time that it's added. Referees could whistle a foul or show a player a red or yellow card if he or she has committed a serious offense. I'll tell you more about the yellow and red cards later. Fouls The referee whistles a foul for unfair actions or use of excessive force like holding or hitting other players. The offended team takes a free kick. Free Kick and Penalty Kick There are two types of free kicks, direct and indirect. A direct free kick is a direct shot to score a goal. An indirect free kick means that another player has to touch the ball minimum twice before a goal is scored. Attacking players form a wall of defense between the goal and the ball to complicate the shooting. The wall of players should be formed at least 10 yards from the ball. If there is a foul in the box, a free kick will be taken within the goal area. In this case, the only player to stop the ball is the goalkeeper who positions himself or herself on the goal line. Yellow and Red Cards As we have said before, there are two types of cards, yellow and red. A yellow card will be used to punish milder acts, but be careful! Two yellow cards shown to the same players mean he or she is suspended for the rest of the game. A red card will be shown if a player has committed a serious offense. That player would be removed from the game. Offside Now listen carefully. I'm going to explain what offside means in soccer. An attacking player is caught offside if he or she is nearer to the opponent's goal than the ball and the last opponent, excluding the goalkeeper. Let's look at an example. Look, this player is speeding up. He receives the ball from another player in his team, but he is behind the defense line. The referee is about to blow the whistle for offside. In this case, the defending team gains possession of the ball. Unlike here, 
where no player is in an offside position as the attacking player is not speeding up. That was all you need to know about soccer to play like professional players do. The second half is about to begin. Start warming up. Hello, friends! We are doing lots of sports in physical education class. Today, it's volleyball, my favorite sport. Let's play. Volleyball is a team sport where players pass the ball to the opponent's court over a net. Players use their forearms or fingers to hit the ball. They also use other parts of their body, like their feet, for example. Oh, remember, the ball should always be moving. Volleyball Court Parts Volleyball is played on a rectangular court area of 59 feet long by 29.5 feet wide. The playing court is divided into two equal halves by a net. The net is between 7.4 feet and 7.11 feet high. The Rules of the Game You'll need a ball like this one here to play volleyball. Oh, but there's something more important. You need two teams, one in each court. You should also know that there are six players in each team. Volleyball is a fun sport, but there are rules to the game that you need to follow. The main objective is to score more points than the opponent. There would be two ways to get your first point. The ball hits the floor into the opponent's court. Or the opponent's team can't return the serve and throws the ball outside the court. Or the ball hits the net. Do you want to know more volleyball rules? Players must hit the ball three times before passing it to the opponent's court. The same player should not hit the ball twice in a row. Teams play three sets to 25 points and should have a two-point advantage over the opponent. To start the game, the first serve should be done behind the end line, on the team's court. The serve must cross to the opponent's court, over the net. If the team that serves the ball scores a point, they will serve again. But if the team that serves the ball loses the point, they can't serve again. The opponent's team will get a chance to serve the ball this time. Here's one more rule you should know about. Players rotate clockwise one spot after the ball has been served. Look at the whiteboard. This team has won the serve, and now they should rotate positions. Like this. Well, friends, the game is about to begin. Wish me luck. I hope you like this sport as much as I do. Come on, let's play. Hello, friends! We're doing lots of sports in physical education class. Guess which sport we're playing today? That's it! Tennis! How did you know? Oh, true, you're right. We need the racket. Let's learn more about how to play tennis. Tennis is a racket sport and can be played against one opponent or between two teams of two players each. Each player has a racket like this one to hit a small ball that should have fallen to the opponent's court. Tennis is played on a rectangular court that is 78 feet long and 27 feet wide. A low net stretches across the tennis court, dividing it into two equal parts. 
players stand in the areas on either side of the net. If a tennis game is played by two teams of two players, each team will stand on one side of the court. In this case, the playing field is a bit larger, measuring 36 feet. If a tennis game has only two players, the ball should not touch the sidelines or leave the court. In a doubles match, the ball can touch the double sidelines except during service. And when the ball is served across the court, it should always bounce within the court of the opponent. I'll explain this part again later on. To play tennis, you need a ball like this one here. Oh, there's another very important thing you need. A racket that you use to hit the ball. As I was saying before, tennis can be played against one opponent, that is, individually, or between two teams of two players each. Each player can hit the ball once when it's their turn. The ball has to be returned after a single bounce or when it's in mid-air. If not, your opponent would get a point. Another way to get a point in tennis is if your opponent fails to hit the ball back to your court. Or if the ball bounces back outside your court. Another thing to remember is that if the ball lands on the baseline or the sidelines, it is good. In this case, you should hit the ball back into your opponent's court. Service Each point starts with a serve. The player serves the ball using the racket, raising one arm above their head. They should make sure the ball crosses over the net at the other side of the court. The ball should fall in the opposite service box. If not, the player who served will take another turn. The opponent will get a point if the second serve fails too. After each point, players switch from one serving side to the other. Once the game is over, the opponent will serve the ball. Points Oh, I've explained so much already about the games, but I still haven't said anything about the points. It's a bit complicated, but I'm sure you'll get how it works. Tennis games are divided into sets. Depending on the type of game, Tennis is played in three or five sets. Sets are divided into games, and games are divided into points. To win a set, you should win six games with no less than a two-point advantage. To win a game, you should win all four points with a two-point advantage, but be careful! In tennis, Points are one like this. 15 is the first point. 30 is the second. And 40 is the third. The fourth point, which is the last one, wins the game. But don't forget that to win, you need a two-point advantage. If the score is tied at 40-40, which is called a deuce, the first player to win a point will have the advantage. Umpires I forgot to tell you who is in charge of making sure tennis rules are followed. In tennis, there are two types of umpires. The chair umpire who sits in a tall chair at the center of the court and the line umpire who calls the lines and judges whether a ball lands inside or outside the court. Well, friends, our tennis class is about to begin. Wish me luck. I hope you grow to like this sport as much as I do. Come on, let's play together. Hello, friends. 
We're doing lots of sports in our physical education class. Today, it's baseball. I'm sure you know what this is. That's right, it's a baseball bat and a ball. The most important thing about baseball is to know how to hit the ball with the bat so it goes high and far. It's not easy, but I'm sure that with a little bit of practice, you'll get the hang of it. Listen closely now. I'm going to explain more things about playing baseball. First off, I'm going to show you the baseball playing field. Have you ever seen it before? These are its most important parts. There are four bases. First, second, and third. The fourth is the home plate. The foul lines are used to mark the playing field. The infield is the inner part of the baseball field, which is made up of grass and sand. And the outfield is the outer part of the field. The batter's box and the pitcher's mound, one opposite the other. And lastly, the line between the bases is called the baseline. Baseball is played between two teams, each composed of nine players. While one team plays on the offensive side, the other one defends. The team with the most points is the winner. Let's look at an example, the red team and the blue team. The red team gets to bat first. When this happens, we say that the red team is batting. The objective of the batting team is to bat the ball thrown by the blue team as far as possible, which in this case would be the defending team. After hitting the ball, the batter becomes a runner. Their objective is to run around the infield, touching all bases to score a run. In baseball, we call them runs. To score a run, all players from the batting team have to run after batting the ball. If a complete run is not scored, players should wait for a player on their team to bat again and run to the next base. Now it's the red team's turn to defend. The defending team must catch the batted ball to get a player out, or as we say, ground out, which means one of the runners of the batting team is out. There are two very important players on the defending team. The pitcher. And the catcher. The pitcher pitches the ball so that the player from the opponent's team hits it with the bat. The catcher is positioned behind the batter and makes sure they catch the ball when the batter fails to hit it. There are different ways to eliminate a player from the offensive team. When a defender catches the ball before it touches the ground. When a defender touches the base before the batter arrives. When the defender touches the batter before they get to base. When a batter accumulates three strikes, they are out. This means that the batter has missed the ball three times. To pitch a good ball, the ball must be within the strike zone, which is the area above home plate between the batter's knees and shoulders. If the pitcher throws the ball outside the strike zone, a ball is called. If four balls are called in a row, the batter will go to first base. But what about the positions of the baseball players on the field? Players are positioned as batters or fielders. 
Batters play offense, and they don't occupy a particular position on the field except when they're going to bat the ball or run to base. Contrary to the offensive team, the defending team occupy fixed positions throughout the playing field. Defenders are located in the infield and the outfield, except for the catcher who stays in the catcher's box. The pitcher is positioned on the pitcher's mound and is surrounded by the defenders at the bases. The first base defender is on first base. The second base defender is between first and second base. The shortstop is between the second and the third base, and the third base defender is near third base. The left fielder, the center fielder, and the right fielder are positioned behind them, in the outfield. The only thing left to explain is how a baseball game is played. The game is divided into nine innings. Each inning is divided into two halves, where both teams take turns to bat and defend. The team that scores the most runs by the end of all nine innings wins the game. The team that plays at their home stadium starts defending. The visiting team starts by batting at the batter's box and tries to touch bases without being eliminated. Runners should try to win as many runs as they can, making sure they win more points than the defending team before they eliminate three of their players. When this happens, defenders switch to batting and vice versa. A baseball game will usually last approximately three hours, though the actual duration depends on the amount of time teams take to play all nine innings. If the score is tied, the game will continue until one team scores and takes the lead. Now you know how to play baseball. It's a super fun sport. I love it. Let's play ball! We've learned so much in just one video. Did you know there are many more videos? Imagine how much you could learn. Subscribe to the Smile and Learn educational channel to learn and have fun at the same time.